YouTube, I'm Nick, welcome to BioGear. Today we're going to be looking at the Razer Blade 14, new for 2021. This is the AMD Ryzen 9 5900HX model with the RTX 3070 and the 165 hertz screen. Um, this is one heck of a well-built laptop. I will say, out of everything on this, this package, um, if there's a theme, it's, wow, this thing is built well. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and dive into some of the details. Okay, so first thing up in my personal favorite category is build quality. This thing is made out of CNC aluminum, uh, milled from a solid block. Uh, it's aluminum on the bottom plate, it's aluminum on the deck, it's aluminum on the lid. Uh, the only two bits and pieces of plastic that I can find on here, probably actually three if you count it all. Um, the plate around the screen is plastic, uh, as to be expected. The antenna bar or hinge cover back down here, it's gonna probably have its antennas in there. Um, that is also plastic and then speaker grills, but after that, everything else is aluminum, and it is built really, really, really well. Everything is so nice and clean. They did a great job with all the uh, aluminum, I'm sorry, with all the black anodizing on this thing as well. It is a fingerprint magnet, so I'm definitely gonna be getting my hands on the skin uh, pretty soon here and covering this thing up. But the fit and finish is phenomenal on this unit. Um, all the lines and gaps are perfect. The touchpad's not sticking up or down inside or outside of the tra uh, out of the keyboard base, which I've had on a lot of cheaper laptops happen. Um, all the corners with the plate as well on the bottom, the bottom cover, it just mates up perfectly. The lid, when closed on the device, also all the corners, you can run your fingers on them and it is just so perfectly smooth and the alignment job on this computer is just great. I will say if they were aiming to compete against the MacBook Pro as far as fit and finish and build quality goes, they're pretty much there. It is. It is within just a small margin if this thing is a little less well built as this. It is so close. So rest assured, if you're looking for just a genuinely high quality computer, this one should be on your radar. It is built super well. So for user features and inputs, touchpad on this thing is glass. It's just like some of the Razer Blade 15 touchpads that I've used. So the trackpad here is not as smooth as like a MacBook's touchpad. Uh, my fingers tend to, if I get any kind of oil or, or, or grease or sweat on my finger, it tends to stick to these touch pads a little worse. This one's got a nice texture, so that's that's irrelevant. Um, it does feel like it scratches up your finger just barely more, but um, it's it's a good touch pad. I'm gonna easily give it a nine out of 10. It's really good. Keyboard on this unit, which I could say the same thing, it's just not that good. 1.1 millimeters of travel on it. It's got a click to it, but the bottoming out feels kind of mushy, and I'm just not a fan of the Razer keyboards. I've, I've had plenty better and I'm just not a big fan of it. But what I am a fan of is the backlighting on these keyboards. They get very bright. The individual color control per key is amazing. Um, Razer Chroma software is also really good. So you can, you can really set this thing up however you want it and the colors are great. Uh, I don't think anybody does lighting as good as, as Razer. Um, debatably Corsair on like that Legion laptop, but I mean, even still we're talking like the best of the best here. So audio on this machine is okay. I'm gonna give it like a seven and a half out of 10. 10 out of 10 is gonna go to the MacBooks. As usual, they're just way too good. Uh, even a nine out of 10 is gonna go to like my Dell XPS 17, the uh, 9700 model. This one just falls short of that. The, uh, the highs are okay. The bass is a little awkward, kind of muddy sounding. And it's just, they're fine. Uh, I don't ever expect good speakers from small computers. Again, Macs are just in another ballpark. They're all incredible, but this machine's okay. It gets plenty loud. It sounds fine. There is some weird software stuff going on. They've got this uh, THX spatial audio and they, they sticker it right in your way and your face when you're playing with the computer, but uh, it's it's okay. I'm just having to tweak it until I, I find a, a medium that's, that's good for my ears to hear, but otherwise I'm not a massive fan of the speakers right now, so yeah, man, I can say it's like a seven and a half out of 10 on speakers. So another absolutely fantastic part of this computer is definitely this screen. The QHD model here, 2560 by 1440p display, 165 Hertz is phenomenal. Brightness is actually really good too. Next to a 500 nit device here and then my XPS 17, that's also 500 nits on the 4K model. This laptop is really close to matching their peak brightness. I'm thinking it's got to be a 400 to 450 nit panel easily. I wouldn't say it's quite 500, but wow, it is good. It's very color accurate. Uh, the pixel density is just phenomenal for this 14 inch display. Maybe even a little too many pixels uh, when gaming, but uh, if you're gaming on this thing, you drop it down to 1080p, you're still gonna have a great time. But 
for the rest of the time that you're using this computer and not gaming on it. Uh, web pages are sharp, text is sharp, colors are popping, and the brightness is fantastic. You may even be dropping the brightness like I do throughout the day to kind of keep up with what room you're in. But yeah, it's, it's A1. The only thing I would change about this display would be to get rid of some of that chin and do a 16 by 10 ratio like almost all manufacturers are starting to do right now. That would put this thing well over the the 10 out of 10 mark if it was just 16 by 10. But nevertheless, I mean, for a 14 inch market right now, this is a great screen and you should have absolutely no reservations liking this screen. Okay, so as I mentioned, this is a Ryzen 9 laptop. Um, it does also have the RTX 3070, so gaming performance is pretty good. Uh, when you try and max out all the settings in Razer Synapse using the custom slider and using boost for the CPU and high for the GPU, um, with that combination, the CPU, when I was playing Monster Hunter World, was sitting around 35 watts of draw and power and about 4,500 megahertz clock speed. So 4.5 gigahertz is really, really impressive. I was shocked that it stayed there almost the entire time I was gaming. gaming I didn't have like hardly any dips in performance or anything. Uh, the graphics card on that 3070 though, it's they say about 100 watts is what the boost is supposed to be, but it was sitting more like 95 watts of draw, 90 to 95 almost the entire time that you had it there. Now if you set this in Synapse to just play around with balance mode, uh, the GPU I noticed was drawing around 80 watts, maybe a little less most of the time, and then uh, the CPU was also around 35, sometimes spiking up to about 45 watts of power, it just kind of depended. Uh, it changed a lot, so it's hard to nail when or why it was doing it. Temperature on this unit was actually going to be one of my major concerns. I'm thinking if this thing's got a Ryzen 9 in it and a 3070, they've got to do a good job managing that heat, or this is just going to be a really toasty, tiny package. Um, surprisingly enough, though, they're pretty well in check. The CPU on this unit stayed between 80 and 90 degrees almost the entire time that I was playing. Um, it would spike up to around 92 degrees Celsius at some times, but most of the time it was sitting between 80 and 90. The fans would just fluctuate a little bit to keep it there. Um, the fans are kind of noisy whenever it's trying to keep it under 90, uh, but it's really not that bad, especially for a package this small. You'd kind of expect some fan noise, and you're crazy if you think it's going to be quiet, but nevertheless, it's not that bad. Uh, the graphics card, though, on the 3070, it did stay around 68 to 70 degrees, depending on if I was using a cooler or not, but most of the time on its own, it would be around 70, maybe just north of 70 degrees Celsius. So uh, that's actually kind of a good... Uh, thermal boundary on this computer. The CPU will peg out at 105 degrees Celsius. I never even saw close to that on this unit. I was about 15 degrees to 25 degrees cooler than that uh, the entire time that I was pushing it. So for everything that's not gaming though, um, if you're just browsing the web and throwing up YouTube videos, this thing stays silent. There's no fan speed movement. Thank goodness. I like whenever my computer stays quiet when I'm using it for everything else that's not gaming. Um, but yeah, there's no fan speed whenever this thing has not got a good load on it. If you start loading YouTube videos and stuff and putting this light strain on the computer, uh, it will kick on the fans, but they are nearly inaudible. It is just a subtle little whoosh of air moving around when this thing is, uh, is, is on light load. Gaming though, the fans just keep ramping up and up and up and up and up to try and keep itself cool, but it's, it's not unbearable. I'm going to have to get a sound tester so I can start doing some, uh, some sound readings for you, but uh, overall I'm very impressed and um, I've got to say they did a great job managing the thermals and the power on this little package. It's good job Razer. So stuff to be concerned about on this computer. It is 16 gigs of RAM soldered onto the motherboard. You cannot upgrade that. There is only one slot for an SSD in this computer. Uh, it's currently occupied by a one terabyte model. I would actually prefer to see more like two terabytes in this unit. So battery life I hadn't had the pleasure of testing too hard yet. Um, I'm probably estimating around six to eight hours of my usage with a brighter screen, um, but I'm keeping it like between 350 to 400 nits is where I'm really comfortable with the screen brightness. Um, I'm going to think about six to eight hours on this unit for sure. Uh, these Ryzen chips are phenomenal on sip and power. Very efficient little machine. It really just does make a good ultrabook that can play games, doesn't it? That's, that's really impressive to see at this point in time that, that your gaming laptop can also be your ultrabook with good, good battery draw, you know, so definitely thumbs up on that one. I'm really happy about that. So ports are pretty good for this laptop. You've got two USB-A ports and two USB-C ports. There is no Thunderbolt because it is a Ryzen powered computer, um, but the speeds are, I think, uh, five gigabytes a second is what I read. So good speed still, just not Thunderbolt for madness, you know. Um, there's an HDMI port on one side and then your Razer power adapter plug on the other side. Razer power adapters are the same as they've been for a few years now with the 15 inches. 
uh, 15 inch laptops they are a really good unit nice braided cable the plug is solid um, it does loosen up a little bit over time but it never gets a point I've never had one get to a point where it just like slots in and out like like butter it's they've always had a nice snug fit and uh, they wrap up really well too so that's also a benefit for travel and taking up less space all right so closing thoughts on this laptop if you're looking for a sub 15 inch model something around the size of a 13 inch laptop um, this is way too well built to ignore um, I think the uh, I think the price is reasonable um, especially because some of the other units like the Alienwares are going for about two three four hundred dollars more money but you'll get a whole lot more power out of those graphics cards this laptop I think does what it's trying to do is be a very portable package with a, a good gaming a good gaming experience and I think it does that really well uh, I'm definitely thrilled with my unit I'll be keeping it um, and it's it's gonna be my little travel buddy going to friends houses going out of town I'll be able to easily plug up and, and game uh, anytime I'm I'm not at home so uh, I highly recommend this unit uh, again the build quality is phenomenal the screen is a massively good option in here uh, I don't know why Razer didn't boast about the the brightness on their web pages because uh, that was a that was a reservation for me I didn't know what to expect but it's bright it's clean it's color accurate uh, there's no ghosting uh, 165 Hertz is just super 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 fluid too so um, you definitely need to check this thing out if you have any questions drop them in the comment section uh, I'll look look forward to doing like a, a one month follow-up video with this thing so hopefully if I can get some of your questions answered in the comments maybe answer some of them in the next video as well so uh, that's been it have a good one thank you for tuning in and please subscribe if you have not it'll help grow, grow it'll help grow my channel so Thank you guys. Take care.